Sonar 2, 80% Corbo with Demonic Robots. Let's go ahead and swap over to that. And there we go. You are live and good to go. All right. Hey there, everyone. My name is Demonic Robots, and welcome to Dishonored 2. We are going to be playing as Corvo, who is one of the two playable characters. And essentially, the story of this game is our daughter, Emily Caldwin, um, was the Empress of Dunwall, and she got usurped by her aunt and encased in stone. So the story of this is going to be Corvo basically finding out how Delilah, who usurped us, is immortal and basically saving the day and his daughter and everything else um that's basically the intro of this game we actually skipped in the speed run because it's just literally choosing your character and skipping cutscenes so we start out um on first input on the very first mission of nine a long day in dunwall um this game is very fast paced i'm going to explain one trick before we get into it because it's going to be going by really fast whenever we throw we take damage while we are in an animation that we cannot skip it'll play out the entire animation immediately and end it so we do a lot of uh, damage skips in order to do so including this first area so time is going to start on first input going to make a quick safety save and now all right so you're going to see me do quite a bit in this game one of the other tricks is going to be leaps where essentially i'm going to be yeeting myself into the air uh using a vaultable cover this is going to be one of the titular uh movement tech in the game and it's going to start with a very good one at the very beginning so first thing i'm going to do throw a bottle at this guy because we need to assassinate this dude and he has an unskippable cutscene. but we take damage after we pick up the ring we don't actually watch the scene of corvo putting it on so that saves quite a bit of time and that's the first example of taking damage in order to skip cutscenes. um we're going to be doing this very often through a variety of different ways throughout the run so if you see me taking damage to myself or something like that or trying to throw a bottle at myself um you will know why because we have the second one coming up right here we want to skip this animation so we gotta oop i'm doing the wrong setup i'm doing it for emily not for corvo there we go so we essentially threw the bottle and then we activated the gun case which threw the bottle into us which skipped the animation so that was the second example of that and again we'll be seeing it a lot now as we become the first leap i'm going to pull out my weapons while spamming jump inputs as i'm vaulting something and that's going to yeet me super far this is the flashiest one but i'm going to take a quick second to set up and make sure that i can get this uh, correctly sometimes the game will not the game will not let you auto save and quick save at the same time so that i'm waiting for the auto save to finish saving to make that and then we're just gonna whoop nope not gonna work we need a little bit more uh speed than that this is a frame rate dependent trick and it is a very uh finicky game so we get it here there we go all right so we just flew all the way over there caught ourselves onto it and then we do a few more to get over to megan's boat and that is the very first mission you're gonna be seeing me do that a lot especially as corvo um the main difference between the two characters other than you know who you're playing as is their abilities so corvo has a straight up teleport it does not hold momentum and therefore we cannot bunny hop with it um emily is far reach which acts more like a grappling hook unless it's carried momentum so she has an ability that also lets her gain a lot of speed horizontally and therefore she can move really fast with her ability corvo cannot so to make up for the difference in time we do a lot more leaps um this is the void in this game it is a self-action game and you use abilities and magical powers in order to move around manipulate enemies so on and so forth um, and this is the person who grants you said abilities i'm gonna try and go for a very hard skip probably not gonna get it but it's a marathon and it doesn't lose too much time if i don't get it so we'll see if i get it. this is called the heart cutscene skip so we're gonna do a leap right here bounce off this and we didn't get it if you bounce off of that item or that like rock thing you can uh, do another leap and you can skip this entire cutscene and kind of go to the end of this little part unfortunately we didn't get it it's kind of an aisle strat but you know for the most time we go for it because you don't really lose that much time like maybe five to ten seconds at most if you mess up really badly so overall it's just kind of worth going to because it saves like 10 to 15. But there we go we have gotten our powers and we also got in a couple of rooms we're not going to use any other powers this game has a lot of them but they're not really useful for the speed run so we're not gonna be doing too much of those because Corvo also has to use his ability a little bit more than Emily, um, I am going to be taking a lot more mana than I would as the other character. The reason for that is that um, simply we just use his power more because we can't get as much distance with it and we also um, just uh, can't use it as often. Or the, we can't use uh, Emily's as often because usually we're doing um, F cancels where we don't have that as Corvo so right now here's just a little bit of optimized movement this is um the dreaded whale it's kind of like a hub world 
where between missions you can use this to uh, look around, talk to uh, some of the uh, main characters that you'll see on the boat, and do some extra things. But it's kind of just to break up um, the game in between missions. So this first mission, we are going to search for the Crown Killer. It was someone in Dunwall who was a serial killer that was killing off Emily's enemies. So people were talking bad about her, the press, all that stuff. And um, what they're trying to do is they were trying to make it look like it was Corvo who was doing it, when in reality it wasn't. So now we're trying to figure out the identity of that person and also learn of where our ally Anton Sokolov is because he was captured and we need to save him. I'm going to do a, I'm going to attempt to do a leap right here. Um, this area is not very good performance wise. So sometimes you have stuff like that happen. Um, we're going to grab two quick things here. We're going to grab this rune right there. Or I'm sorry, one quick thing. I'm going to do another leap here. This is the finicky one. There we go. And then a third and final leap for this area. Oop. There we go. All right. So this uh, area is shaped like a, a horseshoe. And normally we're supposed to go around the entire horseshoe to get to this cart. However, we can do that skip right there. And that lets us skip the horseshoe design and get to the end of this level immediately, which is very useful because otherwise going around, you have to get a tutorial prompt and you have to go through a bunch of walls of light and a bunch of stuff. So thank goodness we have that skip because it makes this area a lot better. Um, now we are going to a insane asylum where we are going to uh, confront the crown killer who is here. Um, we can't go over the lore too much. This is a very, very short speed run and it's very tech heavy. So I'm going to be focused more on explaining the actual gameplay mechanics and what we're doing in a speed run rather than the story. Um, just know we're going to be killing the crown killer. So we're going to do another leap right here. It can also be worth to mention that if I pull out my weapons as I'm mantling something it skips the animation entirely so basically I am doing leaps without putting in the jumps and that's what causes that we're gonna grab a few things in here we're gonna grab key to a door later on and then we're gonna grab two more potions oh whoops that's a good thing that light was there um, another quick thing to mention is that when I am falling you normally have an animation you have to hit however if you are blocking when you fall you will not get that animation so that can save uh, some time later on, like right here, we fall, and we don't get animation. I'm going to do a bottle skip, so this is a skip for a skip. We're going to throw the bottle into ourselves, and then we don't get the actual prompt uh, to skip the cutscene. So essentially, we're skipping the cutscene skip. I'm going to shoot right there to disable that light. I'm going to aim down this way, do another leap to get all the way over here. I'm going to pull ourselves up onto this thing. It's kind of difficult to do as Corvo. And then we're going to go to Megan and talk to her to end the level. So that was mission three done in, I think, like two minutes or a minute and a half. Or no, uh, probably two, about two minutes uh, with lows included. But yeah, again, a lot of stuff is going to be happening. I'm going to try and go over as much as I can. But um, it's just it's such a quick speed run. And there's so much going on that I can't explain everything. But now we are going to Kieran Jindosh, who huh? is the person who's made the Clockwork Soldiers and also has Sokolov captured. So we're going to be going to save Sokolov, or we're going to go, go, go kill Kirin Jindosh so he is unable to make any more Clockwork Soldiers, which is what they used to take over Dunwall. Also, this is kind of the shortest little hub area. Sometimes you have a lot of like things that you have to do in this spot on the boat, but this one's actually pretty nice and quick. So this map is kind of cool. Um, the actual mansion itself has basically a function where you can pull switches and it'll change the entire room layout. It's really fun casually because you can also like get behind the walls during the shifts and changes and stuff like that and find secrets. Um, we don't really use that mechanic too much because again, it's a speed run and it's just faster to not do it. But um, I'd recommend that if you kind of like this game or like that stuff, then make sure to check out this game. Um, so right now we're gonna teleport up here. Gonna do another animation cancel get up here and then right there and then what we're gonna do is we're trying to get up to this roof and we want to touch it and what that'll do is that'll send a cart down the road which we need to take and that kind of hits the trigger for it and since we need to wait there we come down to here and then we get a extra uh, magic potion so I have two potions that I can grab red and blue blue is mana and red is health also, we can just uh, grab this thing right here, and then we can skip those guys entirely. Um, this is another pretty difficult leap. Uh, there's only a few in this game that are actually super difficult, where if you don't hit them perfectly, you, you get some problems. And this is kind of one of them. I'm going to wait till it lets me save. 
Right now it's auto saving, so it's like, no, you don't want to do that. Come on. There we go. Okay, I got an auto save. That's good enough. So we do a leap right here. So normally these tracks are electrified, but they will only electrify you if you spend a certain amount of time on top of them. And because we're bee hopping or bunny hopping right there, um, we're not actually on the track enough to where it'll actually shock us. Um, so it's kind of like timer based on how long you're staying on the track. Then it'll send a shock through you. But we don't usually spend enough time on that track to actually get it. Sometimes if you go really fast, it'll like do two quick beams and that'll be quick enough to where you'll take the damage. But we were pretty okay for that. So now we're in the mansion right now. And this is the first example. We're going to pull that lever. That's going to change the layout of this area. And grab this stuff. So we need to kill uh, this thing right over here. That's going to destroy this wall of light. There we go. Um, you'll also see me sheath my weapons. The reason I'm sheathing them is because you actually run faster during it. Um, so you want to do this like whenever you're not, uh, whenever you're running around and you're not using your ability. All right, here's Kieran. Say hello to him and welcome him to the final mystery. And there we go. Pull down right here. Gonna get right behind this and fall into the elevator. So we killed our target. Um, and now we need to do something else. So that's kind of how the format of these missions works. You want to kill somebody and then you want to uh, go do a certain action. And I come up here. So this is like a little maze thing that we're supposed to do, but we're gonna kind of skip that completely. We're gonna sleep tart Anton Sokolov. Um, he's our friend that we're rescuing. I promise he's okay. It's just kind of uh, his thing right here. Whoops, oh, let me try that again. <laughs> I was doing the uh, wrong strats. So because Emily and Corvo take the same paths, they have some very similar stuff that happens. So sometimes I can get them confused. Yeah, we just sleep darting because if we talk to him, um, oh, excuse me, let me go through the hole, please. Please. This game is not very like accurate with your movement. And then I'm getting hit by this guy. Oh, come on. There we go. Uh, oh, whoops. All right. Well, that's fine. So what happened there is uh, Sokolov fell down and the very frame that he dies, it game, game overs you. So I should have a save that's like pretty close. Yeah, there he is. There. So that's what was supposed to happen. That's also the first time that I've ever done that, which is kind of hilarious. We're going to grab this question right here. Oh my goodness. As you can see, there's some times where he is very weak. Like if you sh like if he just bumps against anything, then he's in trouble. But um, sometimes he is very tanky for damage. It's kind of just a weird thing with this game, and that's like a very common thing. It's just like weird stuff likes to happen that we have like no control over. So now we are just getting out of this area with Sokolov, and we're going to carry him back to safety. So there is a soft lock potential here. Essentially, there is an object that is like an ashtray. Um, I'm also going to give a headphone warning. There's an object that's like an ashtray where it just spazzes out and um, goes flying everywhere. So because of that, sometimes what happens is this object will hit Sokolov and it'll force him into that dominating T pose that everyone loves, which soft locks the game. So hopefully we don't have that happen. So it'll be happening right here. You'll actually be able to see the object right there. All right, we're good. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab Sokolov here. Going to avoid touching the rail. And then we're going to do a leap right here. Perfect. Drop down, drop down. And just throw him down. We're good. Ah, oh, come on. Let's try that again. Let's try throwing him. Oh, there you go. He's fine. <laughs> See, told you, sometimes he's like very weak and then sometimes you can just throw him off the edge of the boat and he doesn't even care. Because uh, this game is very weird like that. But now we are going into a dream sequence. Essentially, this is Delilah, who is part of the void, is going to um, talk to us and explain why she's doing it and how she was actually um, a... Uh, essentially, the, the emperor of the time had an affair in... She was one of the servant's daughters, so she's a Caldwin, but not technically. And uh, really quick, we got a little trick right here. We're going to jump onto this tree tentacle thing. And what we're doing right here is we're going to try and hit the trigger for the second cutscene. This is an auto scroller. And so if we hit the trigger for the next cutscene, it'll start it and we don't have to walk over there. Uh, I'm going to miss it. 
Yeah, okay. So essentially I would have hit the trigger right there and we'd just be falling until this cutscene ended. But um, yeah, now there is that this is an auto scroller, so if there's any donations you would like to read, feel free to do so. Yeah, just wanted to mention that we are raising money for Save the Children. They are a fantastic organization. Even a small donation of one dollar can provide four children with treatment against pneumonia, which is a life-threatening illness. Uh, more like let's say fifty dollars can keep ten children out of or ten out of children's school from going hungry during a pandemic, for instance. Um, so every dollar counts. If you have any money to throw towards the charity, that would be great. Awesome. And if you're wondering why I am playing in Japanese, um, normally in most speed games it is faster in some way or shape or form. However, here it's just exactly the same. Um, it just I really like the Japanese voice acting. The English voice acting is good. If you know Garrett from the original Thief series, he's actually that's the voice of Corvo. But um, after you hear for a while, you kind of want to change the pace. So I swapped over to Japanese a little while back because uh, a buddy of mine did, and uh, yeah. Just something to kind of break up the monotony when you're doing the game over and over, especially since it's a sh pretty short game. So, grinding it out, you kind of hear the same voice lines over and over again. So now I'm going to do another interesting bottle skip. I'm going to try and avoid a black screen bug where the game takes longer to load than it should. So this is what this is going to be for. I'm going to grab the bottle, aim at that chair, throw it. That's going to hit us right there. And then I need to get to the boat as fast as possible. And do we skip it? Ah, uh, we didn't. So as you can see here, we have a like really long blast screen. If you get there a little faster or a little slower, then you don't get it. But like, it's the perfect timing for about when you get there for speed running. So if you mess with your movement there, then uh, you have the unfortunate uh, task of seeing that black screen. And we talk about loads, but technically not considered a load. I'm not sure if it's like Megan getting stuck somewhere and they have to teleport her or whatever. But um, it doesn't technically count as a load, so therefore uh, you lose time. So now we're going to the Royal Conservatory. We're essentially going to be killing off um, one of Delilah's uh, girlfriends and then who is a witch and has like magical witchy powers. So we're going to learn exactly how um, Delilah came back because she was killed in the first game, one of the DLCs, and now she's returned through void magic. So we're going to figure out a way to stop her because in the intro, Corvo stabbed her through the chest and she shook it off like it was nothing. Uh, this is also the scariest area because I cannot quick save. Um, when you are in combat in this game, it does not allow you to quick save, and in this area, you are always in combat constantly. Also, if that bullet hit me just a little bit faster, it would have been uh, a death because you saw me rewire that wall of light. The wall of light is will electrocute you if you go through and it's not rewired. So what can happen sometimes is they'll throw a rock or they'll like try and shoot at you, and that projectile will actually um, trigger the wall of light. So even though you rewired it, it kills you. Also, that was uh, the girl that we had to kill. So we have to kill her, and then we have to figure out how exactly Delilah is immortal. And we don't figure it out in this mission, but we do figure out like where we can learn about it. So right now we're coming over here. We're going to touch the audiograph. And now we just need to get back to the boat. As you can see, it's a lot of chaos. We're getting chased by the officers, we're getting chased by the witches, and the witches and officers are going to start fighting as well. And overall, it's a very chaotic situation. I'm going to do, I'm going to attempt to do a leap there. That's fine. Just running past everyone right here. Make sure that those guys aren't running in at the same time. Do a leap off here. That's going to take me all the way over here. Sometimes, sometimes you can uh, overleap or underleap. But uh, we're doing pretty fine right there. And now that we're back at Megan, we are good to go back to the Dreadful Whale. Um, this is definitely one of the quicker ones, and it's immediately followed up by one of the slower missions. So this next mission is pretty much the kind of the longest sequence in the game. It's technically two missions, but it, it feels more like one. So now we are waking up once again, and now we need to go ahead to Aramis Stilton's Manor. Um, we essentially learned that Ar Aramis Stilton... Um, what ended up happening is like a thing went down and he kind of went crazy because of it. So we're trying to figure out A, what the crazy thing was and B, like what to do about it. So we're heading to the dust district. This is actually the only puzzle that we have to solve in the game. The answer is random, but the way you get the answer is always the same. So I'm going to do it uh, really quick and then I will explain it afterwards because it's kind of a hard thing to, to discuss while you're actually doing it because 
Again, it's not a set solution every time, but the way that you figure out the code is the same. So we're going to do another leap when we come up here. We're going to grab another rewire tool. Did I hit that? Yeah, I did. Okay. Sometimes you won't hit it and it's very bad. Because then you'll try and go through the wall of light and you'll be dead. All right. Will I get the bug? See it? All right. I did not get the bug. Sometimes you get a bug where you can't skip the cutscene, but it lets you walk on like that plane. All right. We kill that person to get them out of the way, and we need to match the names of the items. So Marcola Bird, Finch Diamond, Marcola Bird, Finch Diamond, Natsuo War, Winslow Ring, Natsuo War, Winslow Ring, and there we go. I had uh, only three flips. That's pretty good. So what you have to do is you have to match the names of the items and that note is your um, solution. Essentially, it'll always have like the names in the same spots, but the names and the items will be different. So it'll be like Natsuo Marcola on the second line of the first paragraph. And then you match it up with the item that is in the second line of the second paragraph. And then you do that so on and so forth for four items. And then the fifth one is whichever one wasn't there. So a little bit of RNG. Sometimes you can get away with turning it once. Sometimes you have to turn like almost all of them. But um, yeah, we have some pretty good RNG there. So this is Aramis Stilton's Manor. It actually has a unique property where we cannot use our powers. So because of that, we have to use a lot more leaps and other things to get around. And we're actually going to kill Aramis here. Um, this game actually gives you a lot of options to non-lethally take out your targets. And... Come on. There we go. And funny enough, um, he's actually going to be the only person that we do not kill. I know it says key figure assassinated up there. And I know it looks like we just shot him in the face or in the back with a uh, pistol. But I promise. I, I think you promise he is not dead. But um, right now we have a cutscene. It's like one of the only unskippable ones, but it's kind of nice because it's um, right at like the halfway point for the run. So it's a good little break with him talking about lore and stuff like that. But um, in the meantime, we have enough time for another donation. All right. Um, let me take a look. Sorry. <laughs> I am busy setting someone up. Uh, but yes, uh, we had uh, no additional donations at the moment, but we are still raising money for Save the Children. Please get those donations in. Every dollar counts. Super appreciated. Awesome. Yeah, so essentially this is lore that's going on. He's explaining to us the timepiece and or like what happened and he's going to give us the timepiece. The timepiece is an object that allows us to shift between the present and the past uh, with a click of the button, literally. So that is how we're going to be maneuvering around this mansion. We're going to be bouncing back between two different times that happened. And that's how we're going to be navigating everything. It's a really cool level casually. Um, we use the timepiece a lot on the speed run, but you don't really get to see the full effect of it. It's so like right here, I'm going to use it. And we are now in the past. So then we come over here. That's blocked off, but we use it here. It's not blocked off in the, in the present. So let's sneak right through there. And right over here, go through again, use it right here. There we go. So it's a really cool mechanic in the game that is very fun when you're doing casually. Um, also, I have to land a pretty hard shot right here. If I miss it, it's no big deal. It can just be a little bit awkward. Essentially, we have to shoot at somebody before they get behind a pillar, and the pillar's hitbox is much larger than um, it is visually. So let's see if I get it here. I get him. I did get him. Nice. So that was pretty good. That shot could be very weird and awkward. Um, and you know you got it because if you didn't get it, that would have been blocked by a bloat fly nest or some, I don't remember what they're called. But um, essentially the fly enemies in this game will be blocking it. But now we have knocked him unconscious, so we didn't kill him. And because of that, it altered the present future. So now he is no longer dead. And he's even an ally for us too. So pretty cool. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to trigger that cutscene right there, and we're going to come back out this way. And what we're going to do is we need to do a leap in this area later on. So we're going to open up these doorways so we can get a better leap. 
Um, we're gonna open up both of them so if we get a bad leap or a good leap we still can continue on also we're gonna come over here and shoot this guy because um the button to uh block is the same button that you use to knock enemies unconscious so when you do the leap sometimes you'll accidentally um instead of leaping you'll fly straight down and knock the dude out from above so if we kill him right there it just avoids that from happening by accident and here we learn that um she was uh able to become back alive again and immortal by a ritual which allowed her to store her soul inside of an effigy so because of that um, she's immortal and what we need to do is we need to find her soul oops i'm gonna go for a better leap over here we need to find her soul and put it back into her body to kill her come on try that one more time oof there we go again these leaps are kind of random sometimes and a lot of them have their own like different like little angles and positions and timing that you have to remember um so now we're going to do corvo's very first out of bounds um this is like the only major one that he has compared to um, emily who has a few so what we're going to do is we're going to aim right there and then we're going to come over to this edge and we're going to fall down into it that's going to take us over into this spot right here which is going to spawn the outsider hey buddy we're going to shoot him with our uh with an incendiary dart that skips his dialogue and then we're going to get mash continue to get through this area that's going to get through the second area uh really quickly when we get right here and we can just go straight to the end so very cool one um it skips basically a bunch of lore stuff that we don't really care about emily has a similar skip but it's different um, her ability actually allows her to clip out of bounds way much more than Corvo. So she has a couple more um, clips that we cannot do as Corvo. But that one is pretty nice for both. So now we are heading back to the boat. We have changed um, reality in the present day a little bit. And one of those things that we did is we actually gave um, Megan here her arm and her eye back. So because we saved Aramis, um, she had Aramis with her on the mission where she lost her arm and eye, and therefore she doesn't have it in this timeline. You know, it makes perfect sense when you have a speedrunner explaining it um, in the most concise way possible. But I promise it's a little bit more nuanced um, in the actual game. So now we are going to be going to the Duke's Manor. Um, this is where the term getting duped, if you ever hear that for this game, or Duke RNG comes from. Essentially, he can be in one of five places, and he has himself in a body double. Um, one of these two will always be in the bedroom. However, sometimes it is the body double. If it's the body double, that's called getting duped if he's in the bedroom. And that can be very bad, because then you have to check every other location for the actual Duke himself, which can be very slow. So hopefully we uh, get some good RNG and he will be in the bedroom. But in the meantime, we have a little bit more movement before we actually get there. Along with putting on our mask. Fun fact, the only difference between the no powers category between Emily and Corvo is that animation of them putting on their masks. Emily is faster like four seconds, I think, or something like that every time. So that's why you play as Emily in the no powers category. All right, so here we go. Going to be actually grabbing a bit of supplies here at the very start. For uh, later on. Once again, blocking our falling animation so that doesn't happen. Go ahead over here. So normally there's some advanced movement that you can do to... Um, oh, whoops. I can save you of some potions and saves you having to pick up another rewire tool, but we're not going to do that because it's actually pretty difficult in order to do so. But you can actually get above the wall of light and just drop straight down, but I'm just going to take the safer path because it's a marathon. So that again skips having to go all the way around and find another solution in order to get past the wall of light. If you're interested in seeing like the full game as a speedrun, I recommend checking out all collectibles. That definitely like shows off more of the game than the uh, any percent category does. I'm actually gonna do this leap right here. So we're gonna knock that object off so it gets out of our way, and then we're gonna leap down the track right here. And then we are going to leap off of this. There we go. All right, that's gonna get us on top of the roof. It's gonna get us closer to the bedroom. Nine potions. We are golden on uh, mana potions. 
So we're going to drop down. So we're going to kill somebody in here and we have to hope that it's the Duke. If not, this could be a problem. Whoops. Uh, okay, so we got Duke. So unfortunately, that was not our target. That was the body double. Now we have to check all the locations. This is the first location he could be in. He's not there. He's not there. We got really Duke. We need to head over here. And do we see... Alright, he's in the garden. So this is like the worst one. We need to grab a key off of his body. And he's standing next to an electric uh, zapper. It's kind of like a bug zapper, but for humans. So we had to come down here and take it out right there. Teleport here. And then there he is. We gotta kill him. Move his body. And there we go. Now we have the key to his palace. So we're gonna get around this. We're gonna drop down here. Gotta be careful of the bug zapper. We wanna uh, stand over here. Well, come on. There we go. Gonna open that up. That's the zapper I was talking about, by the way, that uh, will electrocute us if we're not careful. Um, as Emily, you can actually skip this area. Or you can skip having to unlock the safe door, um, which is very nice. Because you can just clip in from the ceiling, but unfortunately we can't do that. So we're going to grab this oil tank for two reasons. One, it disables that so we can get past here. And two, it allows us to do a skip right here uh, to skip some dialogue. Again, this game has a lot of skips for skips. <laughs> So, and this is kind of one of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to get over here so we can be ready for when she arrives. I'm going to wait for the boat to get a little closer before I do a quick save in case this trick doesn't work. We're going to jump on here. I'm going to set this down. We're going to aim at it. And... I Right as the dialogue begin, right when she starts talking, we shoot the barrel with a inflammatory, uh, inflammable arrow, and that will cause it to explode. And because we take damage while we're talking to her, it skips the rest of it, which is very nice. So now we are heading to the final mission. We have gotten Delilah's soul and we put it into the heart, and now we are going to use it to uh, put it back into Delilah's body and kill her for good. Uh, we're going to do actually a clip right here. We're going to get right here, and then there we go. That's going to push us out of bounds, and that gets us right over here. And then we're going to aim our uh, cup right at that little uh, smoke tower in the distance, and that's also going to skip the animation of Corvo actually putting on his mask, which you shouldn't do in real life. Always put on your mask before you go outside, but, you know, this is a speed run. We're going to be maintaining our, our six feet, so we should be good to go on that end. So here we are, um, we're actually going to be trying to get to the tower as fast as possible. So we have some pretty cool leaps. Um, if you remember, this is actually the uh, first area in the game. Looks a little bit different. I can't put my finger on it. There we go. We're going to do a leap all the way down this way. You guys didn't really see this area. This is normally where you're going through a mission one. But because we did the leap at the very beginning, it skipped a lot of this. We'll do another leap right here. There we go. That's going to get us to Dunwall Tower. Um, fun fact, this area is also in the first game as well. They really like to reuse this location. But um, coming up next is kind of one of the harder tricks in this game. And something that you um, have to put a lot of practice in to get consistently. And this is called Tower Climb. Tower Climb is basically we are going to be scaling this without actually going um, inside of it. So this saves a lot of time. Also, we have to get over this fence, which is surprisingly difficult. There we go, first try. And here we are. So what I'm gonna do is line up. Go, first one, second one. I gotta jump over here, climb this, there we go. Because we take damage, we're also gonna skip another dialogue cutscene right here. And do a line right there, break this open, and we're gonna put Delilah's soul back into her body. Also, time is gonna be coming up here in a second. Normally, this fight, she has some doppelgangers that trick you into fighting her at the very beginning. However, we will not be tricked. We know she is right above us. We'll hit the shot. Ooh, did I get it? I think I got it. Yes, we did. Time is going to be coming up. Oh, no, I did not get it. Let's try that again. Hold on. Uh, just a prank right there. Uh, this shot is not random, but it is kind of tricky to hit. Let's try that again. There, aim up. There we go. Now we got her. And right now, time. 
And that was Dishonored 2. We end with uh, saving our daughter who has been encased in stone. Um, and if you're worried about spoilers, A, this game is all about your choice. So depending on if you do a high chaos or a low chaos, your ending changes. But um, even if I wanted to show you the ending, I cannot. Because we do tower climb, it glitches the game out. And we just get a permanent black screen right here. So I think that is the perfect way to end the run. Um, once again, thank you Valuethon for having me. If you'd like to see some more insane runs like this, I also do another game called Control on my main channel. You can follow me there at twitch.tv slash demonic robots. And again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope the rest of the marathon goes well. Good luck to the other runners and have a good day.